Meeting of the Mitchell County Board of Supervisors. We have an agenda in front of us. Um, I would like to uh, be able to, uh, after uh, item 5, uh, VBC industrial development <coughs> uh, uh, request, and that uh, put Sheriff Beaver in there for a few minutes. After and 5? After 5, yeah. And then uh, under item 12, uh, uh, discuss uh, item C, weed budget, weed commissioner budget. Uh, I think all three of us ought to make a recommendation here quick. Or I guess there's only two of us this morning. <coughs> I'm not moved to approve the agenda. Second. Been moved and uh, seconded that we approve the agenda for the discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <laughs> Item 2, County Attorney General discussion. Roadie vehicles. I still have heard nothing. Me neither. Um, I've talked with the Department of Transportation, and now I finally know the method I need to go through to sell the cars. I just need direction from you if that's what you want me to do. <coughs> Else they're going to sit there forever, I'm assuming. What is the direction they suggested? Uh, what we have to do is uh, I've got to get copies of the registrations or the title, then I send them notice by 10 day certified mail. If they don't come and pay, um, then I, we actually just have an auction. It doesn't have to be the sheriff that has it, anybody can have it. And then you give them a certificate which says they bought it at such and such a sale and they take that to the treasurer and then the treasurer issues the new title. Okay. So when you say for them to pay, what would they pay the... Whatever, whatever they owe the county. Say they pay the, the... All they owe us is the towing fee right now. And the registration. And the oh, title. okay. So yeah. they got that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the point. Huh? Because they, we're not going to let them take them because they're just going to be back in violation of the right. ordinance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think, yes, go forward. We don't want them sitting around forever. Right. Well, then yeah. another uh, issue was brought up here last <coughs> week. I ran into Lorraine, and I can't ever think of her last name. She used to be, uh, worked for the post office up there at uh, Mona. Uh, neighbors to that piece of property. And she said that uh, uh, various times uh, uh, she observed a cat going over there and dragging out a rat. and. <laughs> And uh, out of the old trailer. That's out of the old that. trailer. Is there, apparently that is rat infested. Well, the big question is, apparently, or is it? Well, she said, I need someone who, I need someone who, because I know what will happen. No, well, she'll get on the witness stand and she won't, no, nope, no, nope, no, no, nope. it's not that bad. Do you want me to have Lorraine contact you? No, I want you to go out there and you to get on the witness stand and say it's rat infested. <laughs> Take some pictures. Because I know I know what's going to happen. I know what these people do. It's just like domestic abuse, you know. No, nope, well, never hit me because uh, if they say he hit me, then they'll hit her again. So they they won't testify against him. And it's the same thing. Her, she's a neighbor. She's got to live next to him. She's going to say, No, I never said that. I didn't want to have anything well, to do with she's that. She's not that friendly a neighbor, apparently. Because <laughs> they've had issues. Well, on that, do we want a motion on that? I'm really, no, I just need to tell me to do it. That's yeah. good. All right. Consensus of the board. The bad thing is the county doesn't make any money out of it. Because if it sells for more than what our costs well, are, the money all goes back to that. Are they really old vehicles? Or are they fairly they decent? Or? We'll probably make make a little bit of money on them. I mean, I'm just saying if we, if we sell all three vehicles for even the cost of current junk weight, you know, there'll be a couple hundred dollar profit, which rodeo make. Is one of my old pickup truck that's out yeah. there? Yeah. How do you find out about when you guys are going to, because I was going to ask him if they want to sell I keep bees in them. I had seen that truck out there. I was going to ask him if they want to sell it, but I heard he's a little difficult to work with. We'll work we'll we'll find that out. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll publish notice yeah. of the sale. So. Okay. Item B. What would you like to discuss? Uh, the Winnebago County resolution. Uh, I think Joel wanted you to basically take a look at it and see what you thought. Well, like you said, the only difference between Mitchell counties and ours, or theirs, is that Winnebago basically opens up everything. And ours was just limited to what? Uh, 
granular in some uh, mm -hmm. hard surface roads. Yep, gravel roads and blacktops to get into town, the nearest gravel intersection. Yep. And theirs just opens it up to basically everything. Hard surface also. Theirs, yes. Everything. Except Class C's. <laughs> yes. And it wouldn't apply to state highways. State highways. Right. And that's basically what farmers can do now anyway. Correct. In fact, I think farmers can go down state highways, can't yeah. they? Right. Yeah. As long as you got a pitchfork or shovel in the back. <laughs> <laughs> So, that's the only difference. Well, do we want them on the hard surface roads? I mean, I don't know. I, 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 like I said, I've never had a, anybody call me, say one thing or another, other than the fact that, you know, thanks for letting us ride out there. And um, I don't think you're going to have that many issues, because most people are not going to want to be on the... I mean, they want to use the hard surface to get from one... And did they already have to have a slow-moving vehicle sign on them? No. I don't believe so. Well, then what happens when they get rear-ended? Madam? I don't think it's the county's fault. Okay. Yeah, it's not ours. See, here's, here's the thing. Well, okay, go ahead. I, we went over this discussion, I think, when we passed the resolution the first time. There's discretionary functions, and you guys have absolute immunity in discretionary functions. In other words, do we put a stop sign up or do we not put a stop sign up? And what you decide, you can't be sued for. So if you decide to put one up or not put one up, and let's say you decide to not put one up, somebody gets killed, you can't be sued because that's a discretionary function. Now, let's say you put one up and it's knocked down and you know it's knocked down and you don't do anything to fix it. Well, that's not a discretionary function. You, you know, you have to keep the sign. So this, to me, is a discretionary function in which you've got absolute immunity, okay? The problem is there hasn't been a case yet that says whether you, you know, because only the Supreme Court determines what's discretionary and what's not. To me, this is clearly discretionary because you can decide to do it or you can't decide to do it, decide not to do it. That makes it discretionary. So I think you've got immunity if you decide to do it. But I can't guarantee you that. Okay. And the other thing is too that I, did, that I liked about this one was the Iowa Code. That's they're operating under the same laws that the folks out there who are now legal to operate them. You know, everybody's under the same mm -hmm. you know, umbrella that way, and, this, and then we haven't had a problem. So. Well, the thing is, you're doing it by resolution, right? So it's not like an ordinance that, oh, you want to end it, now you've got to publish notice, now you've got to have public hearings, have three public hearings. It's by resolution. You have a problem, you just put it on the agenda for next week, you resend the resolution, and it's no longer legal to drive them on the roads. Yeah, that's so. why I like the resolution. So, so if you're okay with that, Mark, if it's written? Or? If, as long as you're okay with the understanding that it's possible that if somebody gets hurt, you may be named in a lawsuit. However, I think you've got immunity. I don't think the Board of Supervisors can be held liable. But even with our own, the one we passed last year, we still had that. Same thing. Same yep. thing. This just, the only difference is they can drive on more roads. Should we have um, our draft? Or do you want to draft it, or do we have a uh, little we'll doesn't matter to me. I know I had a copy somewhere of this, but now I can't find it. Here's theirs. Yeah. yeah. If you want to draft a copy of the resolution for next week, then... Well, well you can do it today if you want to, and then yeah. I'll just... Uh, I've got some other documents you're going to need to stop in and sign, because I just looked at that everything made back in November for Bob's signature. Well, now it's January, so sure. it's yours, so... Okay. Well, I'd make a motion that we go ahead and pass the... Ordinance, uh, ordinance resolution to the ATVs. And, and um, do you want to, to do you want to have it reviewed in six months, or you just want to say let's review it in six months? It doesn't hurt. I mean, okay. Yep. We want to know if there's a problem. That's the whole idea with this. Okay. With the resolution. Yep. Second. It's been moved and second that. Uh, Mitchell County allows ATVs on our uh, secondary road system except for the Class C roads. Further discussion?
Hearing none, vote plan. Aye. Walk. Aye. Motion carried. Pre-treatment agreement between <coughs> the county and the city of Osage. Uh, I have read it. I have no problems. Uh, Supervisor vote plan. Right. I make a motion to approve that. Second. Been moved and second on the pre-treatment agreement between Mitchell County and the city of Osage. Further discussion? Well, the reason that it's on now is because we should have done it last year. That's one of those, <laughs> that's one of those, you know, change the name to protect the innocent. Yeah, I think Osage passed it last oh, morning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, that's a long time ago. So, so anyway. Okay, no further discussion. Vote Linder. Aye. Walk. Aye. Motion carried. Uh, 845, which is 845. Public hearing regarding amendments to the Mitchell County floodplain regulations. Uh, we're Mark Russ, you want to explain uh, what is involved here? Well, basically what's involved is there was an expansion of the current floodplains that we had and we needed to adopt resolution or uh, whatever we needed to say that yes we would agree to accepting the new floodplain maps and once we do publish it send it down to the state and we can stay in with the federally insured program so if we would not do this by the 6th of february uh people in mitchell county in the rural part would not be able to buy flood insurance and at a reasonable price if they wanted to, is that correct? They could not get the federally insured insurance. So it's basically something that the government is almost mandating us, not quite, but... Yep. Uh, County Auditor Test, did you have any comments, Showing written or oral? Well, uh, Supervisor Goldlander, did you have any comments, written or oral? Does the public want to comment uh, on uh, the pros or cons of uh, the Mitchell County floodplain regulations? If this isn't passed, uh, there's no possibility of getting help through FEMA, correct? Getting help in the means of In case you did get Oh, yes, yes, we would. They, they say that we may lose out on, on uh, federal yeah, help like, in disasters. And my understanding is the city of Osage, or excuse me, the city of St. Ansgar, <laughs> has to pass their own uh, yeah. uh, for the city. Yeah, but we can't do it until it's done through the county and everybody else, too. No, it, it should be every every entity is separate to themselves. Okay. And, and so you have till the 6th of February. Yeah, to, I knew that there was yeah. a time date. Fine. Any other discussion? Hearing none, we will close the public hearing on uh, the amendments to the Mitchell County floodplain <coughs> resolution. Uh, do we have any action on the amendments to the Mitchell County floodplain regulations? I would move that we approve the floodplain regulations. It's been moved. I will second. It's been moved and seconded. Further discussion? Hearing none, vote landed. Aye. Walk. Aye. Motion carried. Uh, item 5. Uh, BBC Industrial Pre-Treatment Facility Update and Approved Payment Request. Huh. Uh, payment request is for the uh, retainage that we had for POPs extend, or, uh, doing the site grading out there, which was done actually quite a while back. So, um, Lowell, do you remember what I sent that letter with a dollar sign on that one? Uh, $3,448.45. And uh, again, the normal procedure is is that after 30 or some days, no claims have been filed, which there haven't been. Uh, <coughs> that's uh, all there is to that one. Do you guys have any questions on that? Okay. Um, quick update on the plant. If you've been driving by at all, they're putting up the tanks right now, the small ones. I was kind of hoping to do the big ones first because they're a little more off the tone. But small ones look cool too and um, what we've done 
as of yesterday is we sent out letters to, I think it was just under 25 primary contractors that work on water and wastewater projects. What we have coming up here is we have a, a big pool of projects in Northern Iowa, and I want to keep the interest going. Besides the two projects we have for you guys, we've got um, just under $8 million wastewater plan for the city of Hampton. So what I wanted to do was send a letter out to all the main players, say, hey guys, look at North Iowa, because very soon you're going to see three projects bidding. Now what we're going to do is we're going to bid three projects in three-week increments. What that will allow is that whoever did get the first project has three weeks to catch up on one of the next ones, put a bid in on it, if they don't get that one, then they've got three weeks to get the next one. Um, our current schedule is, and I don't know which one's going to go which, I don't think it really matters, um, is that I think on February 18th we'll have plans available for something. All right? Hampton's waiting on some permitting stuff. Um, the city of Osage wastewater plant is just about done. And the Valent Prue treatment site, I'm getting a little bit bogged down in controls. The, the company's been out here doing a radio check to make sure we can get signals from the Valent site down to the wastewater plant, they've been on top of the water tower, so we're a little bit slowed down on that one, but starting sometime in the middle of February, one of those three will be available in every three weeks after that. And once I know those dates for sure, we got some resolutions that you guys have to pass as far as public notices and things like that, we'll get all that stuff to you and Mark and keep that thing rolling once we get the date set. So we'll just let you know, I think we're going to have a lot of contractors look in the area, which is great. And it's, uh, timing out with Hampton's good because it just has that many more people working in that situation. I actually had a meeting with a guy from Missouri uh, just before Christmas who was very, very interested in the pre-treatment plant because they strictly do pre-treatment facilities. They work for Tyson, a whole bunch of other major companies, and he goes, I'll bring the whole entire crew up here, and he was willing to talk about it. So the interest is out there. They can call everybody else besides. So it's going to be good, yeah. And uh, it's $20 million bucks for the work that's focused right here in Northern Iowa, so it's a lot of the contractors years, that's for sure. So that's where we're at. Um, like I said, I, I may or may not be here next week, but the week after for sure. And I will get resolutions, dates, we'll get everything all of you guys, okay? okay. Things are starting to go now. Then we need to approve the frame first. That's the yeah, <coughs> top sheet. The top sheet. Yeah, all right, all right, I'd make a motion that we release the retaining 34, 48, 45. Second. It's been moved and second that. Uh, we approve the pay request of $3,448.45. Further discussion? Hearing none, both men. Aye. Walk. Aye. Motion carried. All right. You guys have a great day. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Take yeah. care. Thanks, Tom. Sure. Good morning. I just have uh, <coughs> some end of your reports that I wanted to give to the board this morning, so that's all I have. Uh, if you have questions about them, I'll try and answer them for you. No questions right offhand, but uh, I know I did contact you last week just to give the Joel an update. Uh, well, um, I had a bunch of cans stolen at St. Ansgar. It was no big deal in a way. I mean, it's uh, uh, county conservation cans that I uh, sort through and this and that. But uh, what did occur to me is... Uh, uh, if our sheriff's department can start to get a little more electronic, uh, uh, either surveillance, what I don't know if all of the proper terms, but you know, to me that would be a good thing that we. Uh, and, uh, and I did follow up on that, and I can give you that today too. There's a lots of GPS type tracking information out there. Just a couple that I ran off. If you want to review them, but that's certainly something we can look at. Because and, and, uh, even like when we have. Uh, uh, start to have a lot of car break-ins and that type of thing. I don't know if we can ever get a motion camera, you know, uh, if that's something that your department uh, could use, could have. I know we've had garbage issues in the past where people were throwing garbage in the same location in the country. You know, if we get in the, uh, if we can ever okay. utilize some of that type of equipment, I really feel that uh, it would be worth our while to take a look at. Uh, I don't know what uh, Supervisor Hochlander thinks. But. Could it help us? Like, we have, we do have access to some of the things that you're talking about, Stan, the cameras, and we don't own any of it. 
uh, as a department, we, we do have access to some of that stuff through some of the state agencies. Okay. But do you ever get a request for anything like that? Um, I remember when I was on the city council, we they had some activity going on in a parking lot one time, and they wanted to, well, we didn't have a <coughs> camera, they wanted to set it up in a store window, mm -hmm. you know, that mm -hmm. looked out onto that. and. But it was never, you know, never ran long enough, or it wasn't uh -huh. clear enough, or anything. Well, like technology that. always gets better, exactly. um, and we have used it in the past on some on some break-ins. They had a system they called a Varda system, which was you know, a system that you would put into some type of building, a hog confinement buildings, for example. Uh, we did use some of that stuff uh, in um, the hog theft cases that we had here about a year ago. It did capture one of the suspects on video, um, and it was fed you know, real time into our office. So we saw him go up to loading chutes <coughs> and we were able to get deputies up there. And yeah, so it, Well, if we have anything like that, if we need something different, I mean, I'll be afraid to come and ask this board because I think... Okay, you know, I appreciate that, yeah. ...part of, you know, the public safety aspect, mm -hmm. so... Good, thank you. Sure. Uh, item six, sanitation, PNZ budget uh, meeting. Anything else for me? Uh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. And you're on for public interest. Oh, Mark, did you want me to come in then later? Or? I'll give you a call when all that stuff's ready. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll have to try to slip in tomorrow unless. Yeah, I don't know if it'll be done today. So. Yeah, okay. Okay, thanks. Well, my budget this year is pretty much the same as last year, except for since I went from 40 hours full-time to 30 hours full-time, I just quartered down all the wages, um, zeroed out uh, the departments like uh, Carpenter Lagoon and the Tantat Pool Inspections. So other than that, all the other numbers were the same. No, you don't got any bowls, though. Okay. I give them three copies. You see them anywhere? Well, actually, you earned up until yeah, later this week. Thinking. Yeah, the only yeah, I'm gone uh, to a waste convention oh, for oh, the next two days, so that's why he plugged me in today. Oh, okay, he didn't tell us about it. <laughs> <laughs> he went to get him. <laughs> So percentage-wise, you're probably looking at about, uh, about a quarter reduction, <coughs> and 25 percent reduction. Yeah. And as well, in, that all helps. Yeah. As a, in the years in the past, I've always taken uh, four weeks unpaid leave of absence during the winter months when it slows down, and it's looking like it's going to be about the same as years previous. That again, if that's agreeable with all. And you said you're full time 30 now? Yes. Yeah. I guess I knew that, but I just wanted to. It's hard to think of pretty good. That's good. Yeah. yeah. So my department was, you know, most of the people that contact me are, are contractors or people that contact me all the time, so they were all fully aware of where I was going and everything. So. Hasn't been too much of a problem. I mean, lol, you don't have a lot of people looking for me. Well, Not too much. We're just sanitation department. So yeah, yeah works fine for me. Less now there. than before. Hmm? Less now than before. Oh, good. Okay. Anything else for our cross? No, I don't. Know. Okay, very good. Thank you. Oh, I do have the oh. the uh, when we had the the meeting for the TIF district on the. Farmer Speed and Green area, and I have a couple of copies loaded. You probably want one for your record. Okay, that's the other one. Sorry, Joe. That's all right. 
but uh, the board did uh, unanimously approve to allow that into the county's TIF district as it does conform with our comprehensive plan. Okay. okay. Very good. All righty. Thank you. You bet. County Engineer Broom. Morning. Morning, sir. Again. Again. Well, I, I, I got three copies for you guys, unless you want to make some. Yeah. Okay. I can give you a quick update on what we're doing. It's we're not following snow, thank goodness, but we're brush cutting and doing something work. So we can get right to the meat and potatoes and budget if you'd like. I got with Barb last week and she was talking about, you know, if I needed any amendments to, to get them through, you guys are having a budget amendment here this month. I did have a few things change on this year's budget, just some small things. Um, with uh, We had a lot of uh, we did a lot of pipe extension work from Stacesville to McIntyre, and then some of them were some pretty large diameter pipes. So we had some uh, items that were running kind of high at this time of year. So I just thought if I could add a few, add some more dollars to some of them items. I don't think my overall asking was more than three hundred and sixty thousand, I think, but that was spread out over some items. One of them was equipment. You know, we had that tractor get hit. I had 100000 budgeted, and now we're looking at that service truck, which will put me over. So I'm tacking on a little bit more into equipment budget, and then I'm possibly looking at maybe that disc mower at the end of the at the end of winter here, so we got a backup mower for everything else. And that would keep my equipment budget going for that. How did that service truck uh, look? We never made it up over there last week because we were still trying to get our internationals, and I asked them to come this week, and they were going to bring it over to look at it. So I, I was going to call them today. I just didn't get a chance to yet, but they said they would drive over here and let us look at it. And maybe if he's lucky, we'll give him a ride back to Fort Dodge. I mean. <laughs> so, um, bus leaves Mason City. What's that? There's a bus that leaves Mason City. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, we run a little strong on some of this. I, I was asking on. Uh, are we on the budget? Or are we? We're on the budget. All right. Yeah. Oh, sorry. On the tractor that we got. Yeah. Did yep. we ever get any yeah. insurance money for that? We got twenty-two thousand five hundred for that tractor. Yeah. For the yeah. that's what the insurance gave us for its value of what it was worth. Which wasn't bad when you look at trying to buy a used tractor. In the same condition, I mean, in an operational condition, that's about the average price for those tractor mowers at that time. I just so. Well, yeah. When I when I checked on trade in on one, they, they didn't want to give us even six thousand for the one we had now. So there's a difference between insurance uh, reimbursement versus trade in. Value, so um, yeah, or buy in. Overall. Uh, this year's budget compared to next year's budget, there's a maybe about a almost a 4% increase, but that's due to uh, $300,000 in a building <coughs> for the St. Answer shop. Otherwise, I tried to keep everything tight and the same. I did increase engineering a little bit because we're going to have bridge inspections coming up next winter again. And last year, the numbers <coughs> almost doubled because of all the computer work. I kind of I slacked that off a little bit because they shouldn't have to put as much information on the computer this year as they did last year because it was more or less trying to compile all the information and, and doing all the, 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 the downloads to the SIMS program for the DOT. So I, I kind of scaled that back. I think last year we paid, uh, I have to remember now, I can't think of it. It was, we almost paid, uh, I thought it was closer to $40,000 for bridge inspection, which was double what we normally pay. So I scaled it back down to I think about 24000 estimated. So I bumped that up a little bit in the engineering. And then I foresaw, I was, I'm looking at, you know, the way this winter is going now. Uh, bumped up our, our roadside maintenance a little bit with brush cutting. Um, we were running about 60%, I think, on that item. We are running 83% on that item. I thought we better bump some more into that just because we're still going to have some mowing come this spring.
in construction, <clears throat> I bumped, or we have a, I budgeted 250000 in construction. Part of that is I'm unsure of whether or not when we do Hickory, whether we have to pay the vouchers and then get reimbursed, or whether they do it by voucher. Um, if we pay by voucher, that still means it's money coming over our, our account and we get reimbursed for that later, but it's still something spent on a secondary road. So I was a little unsure of that, so I didn't put the full amount in there because it's an 80-20 cost savings. But in, in addition to that, we still have $100,000 to split with uh, Howard County on the county line. They're putting a box forward and they've been kind of pushing it off. Um, they're using TIF dollars on that culvert and I didn't want to make it difficult for them to have to go through a full DOT letting. If they're using TIF, they can do it local. If they're not doing TIF, they've got to go through the whole submission <coughs> process to the DOT. So I added another 100000 in construction to cover ours. Now, that's he, he doesn't think that it's going to be all that, but he doesn't know for sure until bids come in. So we kind of both agreed that we'll, we'll look at $100,000 on there. And then, and then I've got uh, around uh, 75000 for Primrose up there north of Stacyville that's closed. Get that, those road things are going to do on 218 too. The what that $50,000 or something yeah, like that. That's, that's <clears throat> that I'm putting in kind of a maintenance side of things oh, because okay. it's an improved. It's it's hard to say where, not where you want to put it. It's not construction. Right. It, it, it is, but it's 100 feet, so I'm going to consider it more of a maintenance thing than it is new construction because we're not talking big dollars. It's more like patching. Oh, this morning on the corner of uh, 480, 480th and Ocean, semi turned too short. He was about half tipped over there, and they had a tow truck already out there. I was able, really? to, yeah. <coughs> I was able to get the bus around it. But <laughs> was his trailer? His trailer was in. Yeah. You know that's I, that, I, that's yeah. that one Class C road there. You know over mm -hmm. that. Uh, I tried driving tractor trailer once. And it's not fun to try to turn on a gravel road and make your serious trailer stay. What's traffic controls? That's signing. Oh. Um, things like that. And I tried to, you know, we, we, we expended a lot of money here the last few years when we did all of our construction because I had everybody put up new signs instead because we knew that this this uh, sign mandate, mandate was coming up, so we just started replacing new stuff. And we've got a good share of our stuff <coughs> in place. I'm not saying it's all, but we're still getting our, our uh, sign inventory completed, and as we do that, we're upgrading signs. I think the signs are going to taper off a little bit, but it's also painting, the road, the, the, the line painting and everything else is included in traffic controls. And it, it's tough, it's a, you know, putting budget together, it's kind of a throw <laughs> dice, you know. So really no big changes, just trying to average out what the last year's been going and we're seeing some larger items popping up. <coughs> well, and like everything else, <coughs> When we get all of the budgets in, uh, we'll crunch the numbers, we'll have our crunch them, yep. and, uh, we and I have to get back to, you know. You know I estimated the taxes. I didn't have a full number. I don't know where they are. I just estimated what I got last year. So that fluctuates, I know, but it was a good start for me. And, and I know where my secondary road fund balance was, so. Well, what Barb explained was that we basically have 21 million in an additional taxable valuation, which is uh, uh, going to make uh, an additional 69000 of uh, additional revenues in general, basic, if we keep uh, at the 3.5, which we have to right now mm -hmm. because we still have a supplemental. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, and I didn't ask how it would affect the uh, rural basic. Uh, because, like I say, a lot of that might have been in the cities, which then again wouldn't affect us much on real basis. But, uh, I'll let you digest it, and by all means, I'll 
happy to questions. <coughs> Want to take a couple more minutes to look it over, or should? No, I don't get it. It's pretty good. Okay. You know, when Jim was here, he did a good job of of <coughs> functioning the department. I hope I'm doing the same. You know, trying to keep things tight and watching where everything's at. That's all you can do. Well, we want to try to deliver the same amount of service and. You know, I guess I try to want to improve things too. So. Well, all in all, I mean, you take a look at counties around us, and, and uh, we have nothing to be ashamed of. I, I mean, we, I really feel we have some, you know. Compliments are few and far between, but we did get one yesterday again, so I mean, it's, it's good to hear that kind of stuff. Did you write it on the wall? <laughs> no. <laughs> Mental note. Oh, okay. Take the good with the Sometimes bad. I write them down. Just to look at them. <laughs> you know, it's funny how you're were down. you talking to yourself? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, part of it was part of it was me talking to myself. No, well, it's well, making a good job. It's, uh, <laughs> as long as I don't answer myself, I'm a good job. <laughs> no, hopefully the winter will be decent. You know, I don't know what this this next storm is going to do. If it's going to be ice, I, I, I hope who knows. Not. So, well, it probably will. So, I guess. I would rather take the snow than the rain and the ice, but uh, people might want to beat me down for that comment too. I'll take two foot of snow over there and quarter inch ice every day. Yeah. We'll just see what the, what, the, what the storm brings us. It doesn't sound like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, if it depends on when it starts raining, if it's nighttime or daytime, I have a feeling we're going to lose a lot of what we have. So. How much uh, salt did we actually use so far? I, I Very haven't. Minimal? Yeah, we haven't, even, we haven't even taken delivery on all of it yet. So oh, okay. we figured we didn't need to fill it all up just yet. We've got till March to take our full delivery. Um, we're obligated to take 80% of our order. So, um, but it might be might make sense to take all of it because you know prices are just going to go up. So. I did have a, a salesman in the office <coughs> late yesterday who was trying to sell. I don't want to say snake oil, but a different product that they treat they treat salt with. It's a corn based product that. They dye. It's a dye, so you know you've got got it on the salt, and it encapsulates the salt and makes it a little bit more heavy, so it sticks to the road, so you're not scattering so much. They say you can lose, use less salt, but there's a couple counties trying to use it down south. I don't know if it works for us up here, but I'm going to call some of the guys. It's it's not a cheap product. I mean, if you're going to, what he said was it'll add ten dollars per ton to your salt. Well, that's kind of a that's kind of a plot to take. But if you're losing using 25 percent less as their cost savings, then you can say 25 percent. But that means every guy out here's got to learn to not put as much down, and it's that would be the difficult part. Right. So. But it's a non-corrosive thing too, which okay, well, you're putting salt down, which is corrosive, and using a non-corrosive byproduct on it is that you know we are using chloride, so we're we're heating it up. It's just something that there's this things are out there that I I like to look at once in a while just to see what. If there is any benefit, but I mean, I'll, I'll call and ask. But it seems like in our engineering conference and stuff, people say, eh, it works okay. Cost wise, it may be a wash, but it's an extra, it's an extra process to get the salt treated. So, anyway, be a learning curve on it. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever get any numbers from Dave Jewell yet? Uh, nope. No, I didn't. Maybe I'll ask him this afternoon. To Jack up the secretary. And I talked with, with Greg about gasoline and we're, if there's even any chance of sharing or trying to make anything work. I don't know if the dollars really pan out. We don't go through a lot of gasoline, but if that were to work, somebody's gonna have to invest in a larger tank because otherwise we'd have a we'd have a, a gas a gas tank there being filled every week if we kept the same one. And that gets one a, you got? I think it's just a little over a thousand gallons. And gasoline. And we fill that about I think we get it every two months. We get it filled, roughly, depending on the type of the season. So I figured I, I had the numbers written down on where we, we about use the same amount of fuel, but he's more consistent in his fuel usage per year, <coughs> per, well, per week than we are. Do you have gasoline at all the other shops, too? The, uh, no, we, we only have one gasoline tank, and that's in Osage, and then everybody else just uses uh, 
we have Casey's cards. Okay. And they get the discount through the, that type of thing. So. Well, you know. Well, it, there again. Uh, Riceville doesn't have enough room for another tank, I don't think. <coughs> and Casey's is just down the road. What would be the, we go through. Is there large savings if we buy bulk gasoline? We haven't seen much. Maybe a nickel. Per gallon. Yeah, because we aren't getting a big tanker full either. We're just getting. We got a tanker full. Well, if you're talking eight thousand, we wouldn't. If we filled an eight thousand gallon tank, it would take us a whole year to use it. Maybe. Maybe. So we aren't going through that much gasoline. Yeah. So you can spend a lot of money on equipment. I well, never see the return. I mean, if they want to, if they want to purchase a tank and put it in our yard for them, I mean, <coughs> then you start going, okay, if they're going to purchase a tank, maybe they could be tied together, whatever. But. but then how do you there's a little bit more. Out? What's that? How do you separate it out? Well, we've got a berm, and if they wanted to put another tank in there first, we'd probably have to modify our berm. Right. And then they could put it on one side of the berm and have their own pump, and ours would be separate. But now you've got, you know, it's up to the, I don't, you know, he, he should try to, you know, I think Greg tried to run some numbers to a little bit, but I just, I don't know where the, there's much savings there to they cover the cost. $2,700 a month in fuel? I don't know, about 15 to 2000 depending yeah. on uh, the month. This last this last month was a little higher. It was twenty two hundred dollars. I try to remember right. So I was going to say it's right around that. They might even have something to claim today. Yeah, I got to look at those too. I haven't seen them either. Yeah. Anything else? I don't have anything else. All right. You guys have a good week. No, they're all good. Okay. At least the weekend will be off. <laughs> I go right on by. Maybe. Okay. Prove the minutes is next. Uh, the Motion to approve. Second. <clears throat> Move and second to approve the minutes. Further discussion. Hearing none. Vote plan. Aye. Walk. Aye. Motion carried. Claims. Let's take a 10 minute recess or so, and neither one of us have looked at it. And oh, Mayor Collison. Did you want to address the board? or Just listening. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yep. Didn't want to ignore you. That first time. <laughs> Got a T21 meeting tomorrow afternoon. Got it. Bob's supposed to fill in for me. Hopefully he'll be able to do that. Okay. Have you heard anything from uh, uh, the architects? When they're planning on coming up for so they're working up in that gate or something. Okay. Okay, back in session. Approve the claims. I'll make a motion to approve the claims except for the the two that we are we gonna put them in the take them out of that pond or we gotta send them back to Greg or what? I'm gonna say Kurt had signed them. Ah, Just ask Greg the money. Whoever the powers be, but mm -hmm. you probably still have to pay them, but just whether correct them which department they. You can do that uh, afterwards here, can't you? Mm -hmm. Correct that. Okay, my motion on D then. Just to prove the claims okay. with the corrections. With the corrections. Okay. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the claims. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Oaklander. Aye. Rock. Aye. Motion carried. Approve the 2012 employee gross wage summary. Yep, 
theater really doesn't get much of a pay raise. Two thousand five hundred <laughs> from going from deputy to <clears throat> hard talent and like overtime in there too. There's That's what I mean. Yeah. Oops. So this was correct, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Second. That's just for our own information, though, isn't it? I mean, this this one doesn't get published. Yes, it does. Oh, it does get published. Yep, okay, not, not that it matters, but I. And then does it get published at the end of the uh, fiscal year, too, then? Yeah, no, just, uh, just the calendar, calendar year. Okay. Right. Yep. So you got two fiscal years on there. Well, does everybody do that? Publish the calendar year? Part of the cities. No, I think, I think the school publishes fiscal. Mm -hmm. or, oh, yeah, I thought you meant commons. Yeah. But you mean the other yeah. Yeah. public? Yeah. yeah, I don't know. The school does. So. Yeah, school, fiscal. Uh, that's fiscal. Now why are we calendar? Because we're different, we're better. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care. <laughs> Further discussion? Hearing none, vote by the Aye. Walk, aye. Motion carried. Approve hourly wage for county employees. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, in the past, we've always done a, a minimum. We've had that floor for the quite a while. For the hourly. Do we want to <clears throat> do that again this year? We want to talk about it next week with Bob's here. We wouldn't have to get anything done today, would we? Don't have to. It's just it's easier for planning budgets. Well, already people have got their stuff in right. their budgets anyway, so that but we should put correct with that. Uh, Bob, that's going to always be changed. But well, we've always done twenty-five or fifty. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. I think the last year has been fifty, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Twenty-five. Not a lot, a few, but most of them are going to be the three percent. If you went three percent, would uh, equal fifty. But there's some folks yeah, like county one, care. Yeah, that some one, of the more minimal one. Right. Well, then the, the thing with the county care, that's Medicaid for few so mm -hmm. that, We that, tend to have a bigger turnover out there too than mm -hmm. any place else, and yeah. no, I, I can I'll go fifty on. cents on I'll, it. I'll make that motion that will Okay. Well, Put a fifty cent floor in. Yep. Or three percent. Or three percent. Whichever is more. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Further discussion. Hearing none, both Lander. Aye. Walk. Aye. Motion carried. Now meetings attended. I got a meeting tonight. <clears throat> I attended the city council meeting last night. How did that go? <laughs> Not good, I take it. I just don't see any <coughs> law enforcement agents. And, um, for one thing, the city's invested so much money in they got a new safety center, they got, you know. Then did you read your that thing Grave gave us for uh, the the Mahler, Mahler and Associates did with no, the county. It was kind of interesting. Um, city police are basically pro, uh, how they say, proactive, and county law enforcement is reactive to crime. Um, city police, they patrol a area a lot smaller than the counties. <coughs> the county has the larger, and that's part of what drives that. Um, I guess they left it open that maybe in the future we could, always, we could always look at it, but I think in the end what was said during the meeting and after the meeting is that until the sheriff's position is 
an appointed position rather than an elected position is probably never going to go anywhere. And, let, and also, the code would have to be changed because, in the end, it boils down to the sheriff having the final say on any contract, any any things that they would come up with for services. He has to have his final stamp of approval on that. And that was brought up that, okay, so now you've got two officers during the day. We talked about this later on. Um, and you say had a disturbance in the city here, domestic abuse or whatever, and yet they're over. Are those two? Is one officer always going to stay in the city, or would if you had an accident over on the east side of the county and maybe something else happened in the west, would the sheriff have the discretion to send them both ways, and then the city's hanging out there, nobody uh, covering the city. Uh, the, the response time in the city is, I believe they said it's under five minutes. So, so those are all the things that came up and stuff. Whether or not, they didn't say it was a bad idea, they didn't say it was a good idea, but they just, I thought it was good they talked about it, and I showed up, put our two cents in, and I, I told the chief, I said, the way things are going, I said, maybe we'll have the contract with you. <laughs> he was all for that, so. And that's another thing I'll, I will tell you, I did contact, and I haven't re heard you back from, but you know, when we had our workshop out here, we did talk about that mutual aid and the mutual aid agreements. And I can almost remember at the HERP meeting that I think those all have to be in writing, and yet nobody could put their finger on it. They thought there was, but they, so I emailed Judy, and I haven't heard back from her yet as to what, if there, in the past, there had ever been anything brought up at the meetings and talked about mutual aid agreements or having them in place, and because of, this, if we, the county would, you know, send a, or request the city police to go into the county, or vice versa, I mean, who's... I suppose we're all liable in the end. I mean, they'll shake whichever money tree. <coughs> but anyway, that's where that went last night. Well, at some point in time, uh, it's still going to be a budgetary thing that uh, is going to uh, That was brought uh, up, too. That the mayor said it would have to be significant savings to the city. Well, but I mean, at some point in time, that's what's really going to determine the, the future of almost everything. I think the article in the paper was $165 per person in the city. And I think Royce Tack was sitting there last night and thought that was cheap. So, I guess it depends. Yeah. No, it doesn't matter to me one way or the other. Family I mean, of five, that's almost $750. But <laughs> family of two, that's only about a little over $300. You know, I mean... <clears throat> Well, that really isn't the way to look. At, that really isn't the way to look at it, though. You should look at it per, per lot or per, you know, right. taxable. Right. <clears throat> but, uh, uh, I did get an email from one of my constituents on that, and he said he thanked us for looking into it. Said it's always good to get the most bang for your buck, but you know, be sure that you're still getting the services also. So. New hiring. And starting next uh, Monday, I'll have uh, Pam Byers going to be uh, working in her office. She's going to be taking Jane Rowell's place. So she'll be getting to work with her for the really end of January. Do you have any men apply for these jobs? Had a couple. But with that gender balance there? <laughs> <laughs> Lowell likes a harem. <laughs> <laughs> They don't like to work for the low wages. Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I came up to the council meeting last night. They had to have, felt that they had to appoint a lady to the OMU board. And there was some of them that, well, I know for one board against it. But I, I haven't read that or seen that. That law yet? It was it all things being equal. Of course, this isn't the board. This is an office. Right. This I is mean, an office. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. but, the, but, but it's the same principle. Yeah, it is yeah. the same principle. I mean, you know, everybody should have to hire half and half. 
Alright, I know. Anyway, I suppose we gotta approve that. I'd make a motion to approve that higher. A second. Further discussion. It's interesting. Yeah, well, I've got the same problem. Huh? I don't know. Anytime you're mandated by the state that on boards you will have a minority or a female. And I had one particular board, I bet I called ten women, and they all said, you know what, so you hire a man. And then, or I mean, you don't hire a man, you appoint a man, and he'll take it, but he's reluctant to also. But in the meantime, you still have these other people that write and say, how come you didn't put a woman on? I can't get one. You know, so this is what you run into. But you made an effort, and that's all that's required by the Yeah, at least you try, and then they will excuse you yeah. after a letter or two. But they will excuse you. That's not a problem. Okay. Uh, roll call, what plan? Aye. Block, aye. Motion carried. Weed Commissioner, the budget. Is there... Really, any changes that we want to make? Uh, we basically left it almost the same from year to previous for the last year. Um, what did we expend on that? One thing that uh, did he start about the first of June last year, or I was think it he started a little earlier? Because I mean. If you don't get started, spring. By, yeah. If you don't get started by the what the first of June, I mean, it really gets ahead of you. And then last year we <coughs> run into where he had that injury. Yeah. And then uh, uh, Joe Marsden filled in. I think Joe Marsden did it. Didn't he? A lot of it. Yes, all of it, wasn't it? Or did I can't remember exactly, but I know he probably most of it. I can't remember. I think, well, we were supposed I think to. Uh, Nick had worked a little bit. Okay, I was going to say. But I thought I'd have to look at the time sheet. But. Yeah. I wonder if they filed the report that uh, is supposed to be filed for the end of the year with the state. Not to my knowledge, yeah. Well, we better either get Joe or, or Nick. You, you want to make a note of that to yep. give him a call? And Two items. Because that should have really been done in November, shouldn't it? It's usually when we. They're supposed to come in and give a report to the board. One of them, Jim Doyage used to. Well, would he be on our employee list of wages? If we paid him anything last year? Look on there. Yeah. Let's see if he's on there. What, what's the last one again? Yeah. Uh, Varga. Varga. Be, be in the V's. Yeah, he's. Hundred twenty seven fifty, so not much. I was gonna say he was going to come in and he was gonna go take some jobs or something like that. Well we had some issues otherwise anyway. I just assume I think we look to find Mr. Marty. If you'll do it again. Because yeah. he works seasonal with right. He has all the mm -hmm. the licenses and yeah. Yeah, I think that would be a good choice. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, why don't we wait for Bob and we'll yeah. bring that up next week? Okay. Mm -hmm. this again. See if we want to make any changes, but, you know, I think last year when the spring came early, so then the, I suppose the seed had set early because of the dry weather, you know, so the sooner we can get out there, We can wait with this, and, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. that's on for what Wednesday or Thursday. I don't have my schedule. With I don't. Me, but I don't know. Know. Oh, yeah. Ray Huffman can't come in tomorrow. We'll have to reschedule him. Okay. I think he was probably at eight thirty. We looking for? We 
commissioner? He was on for tomorrow. And yeah, with, with the supervisors. With right. The supervisors. That's what I mean. Yeah, so Bob's we, here tomorrow. We can talk about it. Yeah. We can narrow that. Yeah. <clears throat> but I got to get out of here by uh, uh, basically about 11, 20, 11, 25, early school out tomorrow. Okay. So. Oh, we should be done by that. Yeah, you want to do that? Do yours first? Yeah, so, well, if Bob's here, we. <clears throat> yeah, we can do ours at 8.30, mm -hmm. as long as there's an opening. Yeah. Sounds good. And I just wanted to give you a little update on windmills. I called uh, Brian Sullivan. <clears throat> He's uh, the project manager for the Turtle Creek Wind Farm. And, uh, you know, under the fiscal cliff uh, fiasco, they did improve or approve of more... Uh, uh, tax credits and uh, sounds like that uh, uh, the gal that's actually handling uh, locating uh, somebody to buy the wind power uh, she must have a prospect it's uh, going to be a long time yet before they get everything finalized in that but she thinks that she has a prospect so it wouldn't surprise me here in 2014 we'll see uh, windmills going up yet uh, he had no idea, you know, how much or anything else. It's in the very early stages, but uh, what year? Uh, next year, it would be a calendar year, 2014, is what. Uh, <clears throat> and I just uh, all I'd put down here is that uh, I, I had a discussion with uh, uh, on the Turtle Creek Wind Farm. That's all I that put down because, like I said, nothing was nothing's definite. Don't want to excite anybody. How long did they extend those for? Five years? I don't, <coughs> I don't know that anybody has said. There you go. Is there anything else for the good of the cause? Isn't that company making payments to farmers right now? And what? have been for the last couple of years without any it, yes and no, equipment? Dave. What, what happened is uh, they had leases for property both east of Stacyville and between Stacyville and St. Ansgar. Right. When they had the meeting in October, they announced they were uh, giving up the leases uh, east of Stacyville. The wind isn't quite as strong uh, once uh, they crossed the Wapsi. And uh, so they were uh, not going to renew those leases, but the ones between uh, St. Ansgar and Stacyville, they were renewing all of those. Yeah, because I know some farmers that are getting some checks between Stacyville and St. Ansgar, yes. Yeah. And that, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. <clears throat> so... Uh, <coughs> You're providing more wind than they do at Stacyville. <laughs> Norwegian. If there's nothing else for the oh, wait a oh, I'm sorry. What's that environmental guy's name? Travis Haas, but anyway, they're planning on coming next week to do the environmental study on the courthouse. Um, he thought he could, he may bring a, another fellow along with him and he might be able to get it all done in one day. The sampling, I don't know if he won't. Um, other than that, that's all I can yeah. And 11 o'clock, I think we have a consultation mm -hmm. with either St. Ansgar or the school districts. Or, or uh, Nyack. Or Nyack, one of on uh, the project with uh, Farmers Feed and Green. That here? Yes. Yep. If not, we'll stand adjourned at uh, 9.50.